there's 706 million users around the world that use it. It is permission to engage with people in a business environment because it's a business platform. I don't know about you guys, but when I get a business message or a business outreach on Facebook, if I don't know them, if I haven't engaged with them, I'm kind of confused. Like this is Facebook. This is where my friends are. This is where I engage with, you know, my counterparts. This is where I network. This is where I'm in these groups. But LinkedIn is a professional network and there's millions of people. There's over 170 million users in the US alone which means these mortgage brokers and auto dealers and other businesses that you would love to have a partnership with, that you would love for them to send you two or three leads a week of people that you know they're closing a deal with on a house and they need their coverage, right? Those are great partnerships to have. And it just so happens that mortgage brokers and auto dealers, almost all, not all of them, but a lot of them are on LinkedIn. And so to really break this down, I wanna break LinkedIn into four quadrants. Number one is profile. This is what people see when they land on your page. And it's very important, right? It's very important. It's your storefront, but it's for you. You are the store, right? You are the brand. And so if I walk into your agency today and it's abandoned and there's no desks and it smells bad and there's cobwebs, right? I'm going, I don't know if I want to buy insurance from these guys. Why would a LinkedIn profile be any different? You work hard to put out content, engage with people, maybe even spend marketing dollars on there. And somebody lands on your profile page and there's no updates, no work history, no description, no media, no clear image. I'm thinking to myself, I don't know if this person fully exists or if they're engaged or what's going on, but they don't look like somebody who's out there doing anything. And so this is the first thing we're gonna go through today is profile, because it's super important that if we go on your profile, uh, that we get a very clear image of who you are, what you're about, how you can help me, that you're trusted, that you work with other people. We can accomplish all of that through a profile, but we got to be focused on it. So we'll go through that. Audience, right? Audience. Who is my audience? Who am I trying to appeal to? You can put out the best articles on LinkedIn, have the best profile. You can get crazy with it. You can get approval from LinkedIn to go live, right? There's such a thing as LinkedIn live. You got to get approval for it, but it's a thing. Well, if your audience is just a bunch of random alumni from your college, it's not really going to help you, right? So today we're going to be talking about intentionally building an audience of potential clientele of people that we would want to engage with. So in other words, you guys came to this call to learn how to leverage LinkedIn to build more partnerships with mortgage brokers, for instance. We need to talk about how do we get 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 percent of the people that see your content on linkedin how do we make sure those are mortgage brokers because if the content's geared towards them but i don't have them as an audience they don't follow me it doesn't matter the third is content so this one uh is going to be probably the most fun to go through and it's what do people see what's their impression of you and why would they want to engage with you okay and the last is going to be engagement one thing we will not do on this call today, and one thing you'll never get from me and you'll never get from Tim, is any advice to just cold message people with a cold pitch and that's your first interaction with them. You know, Jeff, Jeff Duncan on here, last one to comment on the chat. Hey Jeff, it's Andy at Team Hired. Wondered if you want to look at our recruiting services. No, we're not gonna be talking about that, right? Or if you guys are reaching out to people, not, hey, we would love to build a partnership where you send us leads of people that you're doing mortgages for and maybe we can help you with some stuff too like no i need to go out there and build a profile that people could see me and who i am and what i stand for i need to build an audience of people and then i need to market to those people with content that builds a brand around who we are and how we can help them and by the time that i engage with them my goal for you guys is that i never have to reach out to somebody on linkedin i want them to reach out to me and I know that sounds crazy, right? I know that sounds a little crazy that, that they're going to reach out to you. But having done this, and I can attest personally, and I'm sure Tim can as well, when you really put focus on these four quadrants, it should result in people reaching out to you. If you guys have ever heard of attraction marketing or magnetic marketing, the whole idea is that people come to you. And a lot of you, as a, a testament, I know you came to Team Hired because you heard about us through somebody else, right? But that's because we've worked hard on building a profile and a brand, building our audience, putting out good content, and then engaging with people in a way which isn't, you know, hey, do business with us, or hey, pitchy, pitchy, check out my, <laughs> check out my message about why you should check out my widget. I get 
at least 10 messages a day on LinkedIn like that. I'm sure you guys too, too, right? Put down in the comments, like how many messages you've gotten, you think in the last year cold from people trying to sell you something and you ignored it. I'll put mine down in the comments. I'm going to put like 1500. It's a lot of people, right? It's just white noise. It's white noise and you don't want to be white noise. There's no perfect message. There's no perfect video that you're going to put into somebody's inbox. that's going to stop their day on one of 50 apps they have on their phone and say, oh my gosh, let me stop everything and book a demo with this guy. But what is going to happen if you're intentional about it is you're going to go out there and build an audience of these people that you want to have referral partnerships with. And you're going to show them that you're winning with other people in that space and you can help people like them and that you are the epicenter of insurance for your town. And if they're not engaging with you to some level, they're probably missing out on business. And at the end of the day, they're either going to reach out to you or by the time that you do engage with them, you've been building an impression with them for weeks or for months, right? So I hope you guys are, are, are you following me so far? I'd love to see in the comments. Am I losing you? Let's get into some content because I feel like enough theory, right? Let's talk about where the rubber meets the road. So I'm going to skip this. We're going to move, we're going to move quick today. And the first thing we're going to talk about is this profile quadrant. Okay. And on this profile quadrant, I would like one brave participant. I would like somebody who feels like they got a pretty solid profile on LinkedIn to go copy the URL of your LinkedIn profile and drop it down in the comments, please. Anybody who's brave enough, you're going to be pulled up on the screen, your full profile. I'm probably going to tear it apart in front of everyone and you're going to love it. So <laughs> who's willing to do that? Who's brave? Yeah. Tim's asking who's brave enough. And even if you don't want to grab the link, if somebody's just willing, like I'm, I'm your Guinea pig. If you could please drop your name. I don't want to use myself. Okay. Oh, looks like we got one. Angie. All right. Angie went first. We'll, we'll go with Angie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you doing that. Let me copy your profile and get you pulled up here. So we're going to be going through Angie's and Angie, we're going to be approaching this as if I was one of these referral partners you want to do business with. And what is their impression of you if they land up on, or they end up on your profile, right? What is their impression of you? So let's zip on over there. I'll pull up, um, pull up your profile really quick here. All right. Oh, wow. We have, we have more, more volunteers too. Thank you very much. Ms. Smith. Thank you very much. Jeff, uh, giving the shout out to Angie. Okay. Oh, it's Megan may. Okay. It's Megan. I'm sorry. It, that, it's actually, it's Megan. I appreciate you. Um, all right. Almost there. So Megan, um, as I pull this up, we're going to be going through a bit of a score sheet today. And this score sheet is designed for us to dive in and really get a good feel for uh, what, what's the, the metric? How do we actually judge your profile from a scoring standpoint? And the reason we want to use a score and we don't want to just say, does it look good or not is because we want to be able to measure how it is today so that if we're going to make improvements, we can come back and put a metric to it. Everything we're going to be covering on these webinars, everything we're going through, we need to be able to quantify it. And so we're going to be quantifying your profile. Um, I'm having a bit of an issue uh, with the, the link and that's uh, the reason for the delay here. So I apologize, but we will be right over to it. In the meantime, um, if there's any other questions you have up into this point, please let us know. I apologize for the delay here, Megan. I'm typing in your profile manually. Okay, should be good to go now. Share screen. All right, everyone see this okay? Brave Megan Collins putting herself out there. Tim, we're good. Everybody can see it. Yeah, we're good. All right. Awesome. Everyone good? So, so Megan, great job. I really appreciate you being willing. Uh, also go Buckeyes. Shout out to my alma mater, Columbus. Good to see you representing central Ohio. Okay. So let's go through and score this. Okay. First thing we're going to do, and I'm putting this in chat because I want you all to see it, but there's a worksheet that I'll give you guys where you can print it out. It's a one pager and you can score your own profiles internally at your agency. Good exercise with your team, right? Have them set up LinkedIn profiles. You can go score their profiles, but let's start with you. And the first thing I'm going to look at is what people look at when they go on your profile, which is what your pictures. That's the first thing that I'm seeing. So first thing I see, you've got a very nice profile picture. It's clear. We can see your face. You're not trying to do anything crazy or artistic. You're smiling 10 out of 10 on the photo. 
also I'd give you a 10 out of 10 on having a cover photo at all, let alone the fact that it's, it's relevant. It's got your logo. Um, it's got a, a kind of a, a tagline there as well. It's got some images. I can see the, the hands. Um, and so, yeah, when I come in here, I go, cool. It's an established profile right out of the gate. The next thing we want to look at is this line right under the name, because this is what appears in search results. Um, when I go on any other profile, it's, it's going to show up right here. Um, and so insurance agent at the Harmony Agency Allstate Insurance. So I'm going to go ahead and give you like an eight on this because number one, I see a lot of people not put their actual title, who they're working for or whatever. This is good because I see the name of the agency, I see the brand, and I also see your title, right? The only thing that I might think with is a kind of a tried and true uh, tagline that people have used that you would add in something very personal to you, which is the value that you bring to the marketplace or the main problem that you solve for people. And it tells people in one quick look what you do to help them. And so for that, you know, you can get creative, as creative as, as you want to with it, but you could put something um, maybe not as long as partnering with local businesses to provide great customer experiences, right? But it could be partnering with local businesses. It could be providing great customer experiences. It could be um, helping, you know, connect people with the best product for the lowest price you've got some room to work with. In fact, I've seen some of the top profiles on LinkedIn. They're called LinkedIn Lions. LinkedIn Lions, like a top 1% profile. They'll have a paragraph in there almost, right? They'll have some emojis, some things that catch attention. So again, but I'm going to give you an eight. It's great. It's fine as it is. I don't see any major room for improvement. It's just something to think about, you know, that somebody may not click on your profile. The only thing they might look at is the tagline underneath your name. Um, See, I like, like Heath Case. Perfect. Thank you, man. Uh, mine says I'm not an insurance agent. I'm a local insurance advisor, right? Like that's perfect. You're, you're using that space because, because it's attention, right? I only have a few seconds when somebody looks at my profile to grab their attention. And this is my opportunity to leave them with an impression, right? It's a little bit of marketing. So, um, Heath, great. If any, anybody's looking in chat, you'll see Heath has got one there. That's a little bit unique. And so Megan, good job on that. The next one's the about section. So I'm just kind of going in order here. So for this, I want you to start thinking with marketing. Like I need to grab people's attention. And when it's a paragraph format, and again, Megan, you were kind enough to volunteer yourself. We got like 50 people on here. You were the first one. So again, I'm not, I'm not coming at you, but I am, I am putting you on the spot because you volunteered to say in this section, Megan, I'm going to score you at a three. And the only reason I'm not going to do that, or I'm going to do a three without even reading it, I didn't even read it, is because my attention is already on to the next. I'm scrolling down past it. Why? Well, because it's one line, or it's, it's a couple lines. I don't see any call to action. There's no look here going on. And I know that that sounds a little funny, but let me get a little, a little more specific. Um, not making this about myself. I'm going to jump over to my profile very quickly and hope that I updated this because I might be putting myself on the spot here. I'm going to score myself a four, okay? I'm not a 10 on this. I'm going to give myself a four, okay? Because I could do a lot better. But I'm not going to score myself a three. Why? Because in one line, I'm telling exactly what we do. And then I've got some bullet points and my cell phone. So I'm trying to, if somebody's going to read this, I'm trying to make it easy for their eyeballs to go down a list. Reduce hiring time find a hire, increase retention, save time. Like I know by the time I get to the bottom of these bullets, what Andy Arter is all about, right? But I needed to get somebody to look at that. So for me, what I'm probably doing here is updating, putting some emojis, maybe a big arrow, start here in all caps, right? Like you could literally come in and say, start here, right? What? are we all about save real simple tweaks here start here what are we all about i'm just hoping that for every 100 people that scroll through my profile i can get five extra people to stop and actually read this thing you're never going to get everybody it's just like a website it's just like a postcard direct mail but it's marketing and it's marketing space okay so let's come back to your profile again i'm not going to make this about mine I, you know let's let's make this about you guys so when we look back at Megan on your profile, if it'll get me back there, the next section is gonna be something called media. 
if you don't have media on here and you all are logging into your profiles going media where's that the reason you're not seeing it on your profile is because you need to go in and hit edit and add it as a section it's one of the most underrated sections on LinkedIn because it allows you to put links to YouTube videos or PDFs and they will show up and they're they're clickable so if you look at how it displays on an actual screen here here's the featured section the media section on my profile right and I can put an article there I put a interview with Dave on here and so this is imagery this is real estate that if you're not using you're missing out on a couple image slots and a couple attention grabbers you could literally if you if you like put in the comments below if you've already got a really good mortgage partner in the industry who's in your town or 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 automotive or any industry if you've got somebody who's like a really solid people know their name like in our town in sarasota leslie wells realty leslie is the person if i had an agency and leslie was a referral partner she'd be my person right who's that top person that you've got as a referral partner i'm inviting those people to my office i'm going to buy them lunch i'm going to stick them down with a with a camera on a tripod or a sony or whatever and i'm going to say hey i'd like you to do me a favor you and i were just talking at lunch about how indispensable our agency has been to your business helping you grow your mortgage business locally can you just do a 60 second testimonial on that can you just talk to people about as a, a mortgage broker how valuable that's been for you. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna throw that on your profile and drip it out on your, your, your news feed, and you're gonna put it on your website. Like if I'm intentionally trying to drive mortgage brokers to my profile, wouldn't it make sense that the first thing they see is a reputable mortgage broker who loves working with us? Where, because they're probably gonna recognize that person's face before they recognize your face, to be honest, right? Like Keith, if I put out your face, right? Most of you, I put out your face, they're gonna recognize you before Andy Arter at Team Hire, but if I'm like, hey, we work with whoever, right? Like, it's a tight-knit community. You all are tighter with each other than with the recruiter, right? I'm on the Facebook, like, I'm not on the Facebook groups, but I'm on Facebook and I see how tight everyone is. It's amazing, you guys are amazing. It's a very tight-knit community. I've found the mortgage industry to be even tighter in some ways. Auto industry, not so much. Those guys like to compete. Those guys and gals, they like to they like to do this and be the best. But but you guys like to be the best together. Well, mortgage is very tight. Mortgage brokers do weekly luncheons to look at new listings together. They see each other at the same open houses. They're in the same newspapers together. So I need to start thinking with my face isn't going to sell us building a partnership with a new mortgage broker me driving a new mortgage broker to my profile or to my content and they see other mortgage brokers winning with us that's going to pique their curiosity because i'll tell you how mortgage brokers and auto dealers and all these guys operate you guys know this they always want one up on the competition what's this guy or gal doing that i'm not doing right my cousin has one of the, the leading drone imagery companies in mortgages so they go in and they shoot content from up in the sky and they'll fly through a house and they'll do 360s of these mansions for people that are trying to sell their homes. And I was just talking to him last week, late at night, and he works with several thousand mortgage brokers and he's looking to grow even more. And he's like, these guys are so like, follow the trend, right? And I'm like, what do you mean by that? And he's like, well, they, there's so many things that don't work that when something does work, like, they're on it. However, it takes a lot to grab their attention. It takes a lot to grab their attention because they get cold called all day long and they're being marketed to by the latest widget to make you the local mortgage expert, right? So this is no easy task. And I think the easiest way for you guys to grab their attention is by showing their competitors, show their friends, show the people they do luncheons with who you're already working with. So Angie, you said, yes, you've got somebody like that. Who else already has a referral partner? At least one at least one, I, I don't care if it's an auto dealer or a mortgage broker, who has somebody on the outside of the business who is sending business your way on a regular basis, if you could put down in the chat. Because if you do, you have a responsibility to make sure that person is happy and then make sure that you capture their happiness and throw it out to the world so they can all see it. No different than Team Hire putting a thousand video testimonials on our website. It's by design, right? We want other agents to see that people win with our recruiting services. You should want everybody to see that that person is winning because are they just sending you business because they like you or are they sending you business because you got a good thing going here because you can help them too. 
my guess is for most of you, you've got a nice symbiotic relationship going on. So if you're not shouting that out into the world by getting content out there about their, them winning, then you're missing the point. The point is to show that people are winning on your product, not that you're awesome or you're amazing. A, a client will always show that a hundred times better than you could ever show yourself, if that makes sense. So I got a question here. How do you add media? You go to your profile, you hit edit profile. There's a featured section. If you haven't added anything on the featured section, it'll show up blank. But when you're in there on your edit profile, I think if I go to uh, edit here, uh, it would be down on the actual profile section featured, you should see a featured section where you need to add content by hitting a plus sign. Once you add that, uh, you can add a post, an article, a link, or media. So if you guys have spent money or time, oh, Justin, I'll answer your question here in just a second. If, if you guys are, are recording content and putting it out on YouTube, if you guys have articles you've written about uh, how to save on insurance policies, like any and all of that can be put in here. You can put any link on planet earth you want into this profile. Um, and so huge, huge value add to be able to add these. And if you, if you can't find it, um, David, you asked where, where can you find that? Uh, hit me up afterwards, Andy at teamhired.com. We can jump on a phone call together for any of you and, and we can, we can walk through your profile and help you find it. If you can't find it on your own, um, Justin, you asked a question. You said, are you just adding those partners under the featured section? No, but it's the first place I would add them. I would add them to the, the featured section. And okay, Don, you also can't find it. So it looks like there's some issues with, with how to find it. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and Tim and I will dig in and uh, look at why you can't see that on some of your profiles. If you, if you don't mind. Um, on, yeah, on I'll, put, I'll put your email there so they can email you like yeah, afterward. Tim, that's yeah, great. So, yeah, that's perfect. Well, that's his email. Just, just kind of get to him. You can get to him now if you like, or, you know, but he got you. Yeah, if, if, uh, if you don't mind, um, shoot me an email to Andy at teamhired.com if you're having any difficulty with that. Um, what I'll, I'll probably do is end up recording just like a five minute how to on how to find it and just sending it out to you. So if, if you have issues with any of this, um, oh, Maureen said that within certain companies, there's some blocks and stuff from a corporate level. So let's not get too hung up on this because for some of you, it sounds like you'll be able to do this. Some of you, you won't, okay? But this only makes up about 10% of what we're talking about today. The important piece is if you can add it, use it. If you can't for compliance, you can't. Just like you can't text people cold in the insurance industry. Like if you can't do it, you can't do it. Just let's, let's live with it and let's move on. From an activity standpoint, all of your activity is right here. So if I come back, again, let's get off my, let's get off my deal here. We're going back to Megan. Megan, you didn't know you were going to be, <laughs> be on here for half an hour today with your profile. Um, this is good. Hopefully it gets you, gets you some new followers. So from an activity standpoint, everything that she does is seen on here. So you can see the types of content she likes, comments, if she puts out a video, if she puts out an article, I can see all of it. I'm going to assume 95% of people will never click on see all activity. Like Megan, you probably click on this, right? You click on here and go, what's all my past activity? Here's all the articles I've written. Here's my posts. Here's my documents, right? Anything I've put out. Right. And it looks like you're putting out good content about properties, insurance. You've got some motivational quotes. So I'm loving this. Like I'm loving the variety. I'm loving that Megan's putting out content because that means people see her. Just so you guys know, if you're not putting out content, if you click on your see all activity and you check this out, people aren't seeing you. People are not seeing you. Like the main way that LinkedIn's algorithm works is that the more content that you get and the more people engage with it, the more they will show you. So you'll notice that if you put out consistent content, your followers and the number of people that engage on those posts will be very small for the first couple of days. So don't give up, continually put it out because LinkedIn's algorithm will recognize, wow, they're starting to put out content. They want people to like being on LinkedIn. They make money when people hang out longer on LinkedIn. Why would they serve your profile to any mortgage broker or auto dealer if you're not offering any content? There's nothing for people to engage with which means they're less likely to use LinkedIn, which means LinkedIn makes less money. They wanna make money. They make a lot of money too, but they can only do that if their users put out good content. So the people they praise and they love are the ones that put out consistent content. Now, oh, so, pro so there is some incentive to, to, to actually hear. Okay, I was wondering that myself. So it's like the more you use it, kind of like the more they'll, uh, the more they'll show you. It's like exponential and okay. it'll also, it'll work the opposite direction. Like for me, 
I've got close to 15,000 followers on here. Yeah. If I, if I don't put out content consistently and then I, a month from now I put out a piece of content, I'll get like one like on it, 20 views. But when you put out consistent content, that's where you'll see a hundred likes. You'll see bigger engagement. And I've got people I don't even like on, <laughs> I don't really like to follow their stuff. <laughs> They're so good at putting out content. They're like all I see. Um, mm -hmm. And because it's so consistent. And so that whole adage of like, put content out on LinkedIn, they reward you for it. Like what I've found on Facebook, they don't necessarily reward you. You can get like isolated from a lot of your friends on Facebook and a lot, like people won't see your stuff. So LinkedIn, what do they call it shadow band? They shadow ban you or something like that? Or is that? Shadow ban or like, yeah, or they'll just, <laughs> you know, you end up in this very niche group of an audience. Whereas with mm -hmm. this, like, there's 706 million users on LinkedIn. I would guess that 90% of them aren't active with their content. So if you guys actually just go on once a day and put out content, put out a testimonial from a referral partner that you work with, put out something new that you guys are offering as an agency, take a picture of your staff at the front of the room and put a quote together about how much you like to take care of your customers and put that out. Create some content interviewing a customer that was in a tough situation that you helped solve their problem put that out there. Like it, there's so many, there's literally no excuse not to put out at least one piece of content a day. And that's really going to help accelerate your growth on this thing to, so that your audience actually sees your content, but stick into profile because we're still on the first of the four quadrants, but I think one of the most important, make sure that your activity is being updated. Megan, I'm going to give you like a nine out of 10 on this. The only thing I would say is, you know, it's important that you understand that the last four are gonna be what people see, and they're probably not gonna click into see all activity, right? People probably aren't digging that deep into your profile. They're just glancing at it. So I wanna make sure like my text or what I'm putting out on these posts can leave an impression with somebody. Now, you're not always gonna put out content to make sure that the title looks good on your profile, but you're also gonna to wanna to make sure you're not putting out like silly memes of like a, a goofy chihuahua doing crazy stuff, because that's what's gonna show up on your profile under activity. So when you put out a post, it's going on here and it's living on your profile for everyone to see. So if you want to go on there and you want to rant about Joe Biden or Donald Trump or whoever, or COVID, like be careful, be careful, tread lightly, like try to keep those conversations between you and your friends, because, you know, unless you're opposed to doing business with uh, people of a different ideology of you, right? If you're still open to doing business with people that may not share the same political views of you or whatever, try not to isolate yourself by putting out political content. That should be a no-brainer, but I know we've got some team members on here. Uh, I've made that mistake in the past, right? And I've gotten called out for it. I, want, I don't want you guys to make the same mistake. It's okay to be yourself, right? But for a lot of your team members on here, right? If you're in sales on this call, people don't need to know who you voted for. That's not what they're interested in. If that's what they're interested in, you can go meet up with them at Starbucks and have that conversation. The only reason people are trying to engage with you is to save money, save time, improve their life through your product and service. So let's make sure we understand this is a professional network designed for that. And if you decide for whatever reason to go there and be very loud about whatever your, your views are, and they're isolating, they're not helpful, they're isolating, like 50% of the US population believes this, the other 50% believes this, and here, let me clearly push myself into this group. Like you do what you want to do. I'm just telling you, if you're putting out political content on here and it shows up on your activity here, I'm getting a weird impression about you the first time I go to your page. I'm like, okay, this is more of a personal page where they put out their opinions. But if I come here and I'm like, wow, Megan's like involved, she's engaged, there's homes, there's addresses on here. There's a video of some kind with a Santa hat. That's cool. I can see her title. There's a bit of an about section going on. That's what we're looking for. It's that impression for the business they're looking to engage with. Now, experience is another one that's super important that we keep it simple, but we do include some detail. So on the experience piece, it's very important that when you guys score yourselves, you're scoring it based on number one, is it complete? And number two, what impression is left with somebody? If you go through here and you copy and paste your resume, right? The average resume is read for six to 11 seconds on the latest study they did. The average resume is read for six to 11 seconds. Well, this is your business resume, right? Probably not sitting on your profile for more than a few seconds, just like a resume. So I don't need six paragraphs here. It's not gonna accomplish anything. I also do need something that's gonna tell people that I'm a professional. And what I see the most of 
is people, you will have people on your team today, right? Sitting on your sales team, sitting on your service team. You're sitting there right now on the sales team and you're thinking, I don't have anything impressive enough to put out there. I'm not cool enough. I haven't done enough. I don't have enough work experience. Oh yeah? Well, somebody believed in you enough for you to sit in the position you're at today and work with a valued client base and sell and service and represent the brand. You are good at what you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the job, right? And so if you have only had one sales position or one position at all, or if your past position was working for, I don't know, McDonald's. Awesome. What did you learn at McDonald's? What are the two biggest bullet points you can think of, right? Worked at McDonald's. If that's it, then okay. But how about this? Worked at McDonald's in an environment where hard work was praised. Proud to work in a place that most people think is a deadbeat job, but I rose to the top of the ranks, was offered an assistant management position and loved what I did. I always took pride in taking care of customers. Like we would coach candidates to do the same thing on a resume. Why are you gonna downplay yourself by not including the position, right? And so I just really encourage you guys, just lay out your life, be yourself, be honest. When has that not been the right policy, right? So when people are like, well, maybe I'll just put the last two positions because they've got the biggest title, but I'm going to leave off that caretaker position I had for three months. Why? Maybe the person looking at your profile used to be a caretaker and they're like, you were a caretaker? That's so cool. How could they know that about you if you don't think it's important enough to put on a LinkedIn profile? I've had people engage on my first position where I worked in a company in Western New York building LED lights for the, for the semi-truck business. And they're like, my brother-in-law owns a fleet of trucks. He used you guys for his lighting. That was a good company. But if I'm like, what, how is that relevant to insurance and recruiting? Well, it's not. It's not at all, but it's relevant to people, to human beings. And so like your, your school. It's awesome, Megan, 10 out of 10 on education. You've got what your degree was, but more importantly, you've got the big Ohio State logo here. How many more people will engage with you when they see that you're an alumni, right? There's probably over a million, millions of alumni. Ohio State's huge. So you're automatically saying, hey, I've been in the same place you've been at. We've been in the same corridors together. Lead preschool teacher, thank you so much for including this. I'm automatically upgrading your entire experience section to a 10 because you put that. This tells a story. Now I know who Megan is. If Megan just had the account manager at the Harmony, Harmony Agency and didn't have Zinc on here and didn't have Sugar Run and didn't have the Goddard School, I'm like, this is weird. How's she an account manager? Like, what did she do before that? Who is she? So you guys see what I'm saying here? And I know there's somebody. I know there's somebody on a team right now sitting in at the agency going, I don't have anything to show. I just graduated from college or I just graduated high school or... I flunked out of high school and this is my first job ever and I'm in an insurance position. Cool, what are your hobbies? Like you need to tell people who you are or else how are they supposed to know who you are, okay? I'm nothing special. I don't know why I have 15,000 followers on LinkedIn. I really don't, right? I really don't. It doesn't make a lot of sense. There's a lot of you on here who should have 50,000 followers based on the influence, how much you help people, the amount of money you make people, who you are but you gotta work on this LinkedIn so people can find you and so they know who you are. So I just encourage you, put yourself out there. Licenses and cert certifications, fantastic. Megan, thank you for including this. Any certifications, awards, I don't care how silly it is. You got the Rising Star Award freshman year for the tennis team. Put it on there. You wouldn't believe how many people might really appreciate the athletic background that you had or that you have your license or that you have this or you have that. So. The whole point to this middle section, guys, on experience, education, licenses, if you have any reservations that your past title or whatever isn't worthy of putting on here, then I've definitely failed you guys of illustrating the point that this is a profile that is meant to tell a story about who you are as a person. And it should be okay for you to put out who you are as a person, knowing that people always appreciate that more than you trying to give them some impression about who you are, okay? because you can smell that a mile away. The next one is skills and endorsements, and you cannot add these for yourself. These must be added by other people, okay? The best way I've found to get more skills and endorsements, this is where other profiles will endorse you and say, oh, they're good at this, and I know because I've worked with them. They're good at organizational skills. You've had seven people recognize you for your organizational skills. 
four on analytical skills, four on office administration. This does leave me with an impression of you, Megan. Like, wow, I, I, I probably could probably rely on her. She's probably pretty organized, probably going to communicate well. Like people are recognizing her for that skill set. A lot of people don't have that. And these are peers recognizing you for that. I might only look at this section on your profile for a second and a half. But is it here? Yeah, it's here. Does it, am I getting endorsements? Yeah. So 10 out of 10. Now you can get more than this. You can get 100, 500, whatever. But one thing to keep in mind, it's always more powerful to endorse other people than it is for you to get endorsements. And if you endorse other people, you will get endorsements. So I can come in here to, you know, your profile and I can add endorsements once we're friends and the likelihood you're going to come back, Megan, and say, you know what? Andy did that webinar with us. I think I'm going to endorse him for training or whatever, right? That's how that stuff works. But I grabbed your attention first by endorsing you. So if you're, if, if you look at this section, you're like, I don't have any endorsements. Start by going and endorsing other people. Naturally, there's going to be a certain number that come back to your profile and they return the favor. Does that make sense? Um, recommendations. Oh my gosh, I've done this call. I've done this type of training 20 times. I've never seen anybody with recommendations. Megan, you get an 11 out of 10 on this one. Megan, I, I see why you volunteered. This is a really good profile because you have recommendations from client services manager at Zinc, the project coordinator, right? And there's maybe even more here. There's three, marketing and communication specialist at Zinc. This is huge. And this is where, if you can start getting recommendations from your referral partners you currently have, this is another place where their face can exist. I can go request recommendations from friends. So if you guys are friended up with one of these people that's a referral partner in your market, right? You guys have a mortgage broker that sends you a lot of business. You send them a lot of business. You can click on their profile and you can click on the little three dots, or you can do it from this section down here. And you can ask that they recommend you. And it'll send them a nice little message that says, hey, would you mind recommending me for the work we've done in the past? Really appreciate it. Nine out of 10 people will write you that recommendation. How cool would it be if you had two or three local business owners that were referral partners with you that put their testimonial? Or what if you got a client who's a commercial client, right? Like you sold them a commercial policy to protect their warehouses. Be cool if they were in here. You know, company's been protecting me for the past five years. Last time we had a, a, a flood come in, they were indispensable to my business and probably helped me salvage all my warehouses by really working the policy. These guys are the bomb. That should be on there, but you're not going to get it if you don't ask for it. So if you guys have friends today that you're connected with that could recommend your business and could recommend you, put it here. And guess what? I screenshot these and I put them out on Facebook and I put them out in posts and I thank people for the recommendation and I can use it in marketing. So it doesn't just have to live on your profile. This is a recommendation that can be reused. Think of it like a personal testimonial section, right? That you can collect testimonials about you. Pretty wild that they make this available to people. And then interests, okay? So I can see what you're interested in, right? Ooh, Deepak Chopra. There's some deep literature right there. Um, so I go through and I look at your interests, right? And, and you have some interests on here. Brene Brown, online insurance professionals, Nestle. This is one, if somebody gets all the way to the bottom of your profile, cool, okay? I mean, if they can see some interest that you've got, it would help if they were relevant to the space. Probably help if you weren't interested in uh, like North Korea, like interested in like love North Korea. They're the best country ever, right? Like I'm just being silly, but but just think about like people could see everything that you like on here. And so what brand, what are you telling them about yourself? And so um, anyway, this last one, not as important on interest, but still just think about like if you like a page, it's going to show up here. People can see it. It's important to be conscious of that. So when we go back up, okay, on, on profile, uh, the last thing I'm going to look at is, uh, uh, where's it at? Oh, I got to connect with you. Is once I connect with somebody, are my contact details on here? And is there an easy way for them to get in touch with me? So if I were you, Megan, I would go to Calendly.com, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y.com. I would go ahead and get a free account if you don't already have one. And I would set up a meeting type, which is a 30 minute consultation with Megan. And I would put it under media or under the about section or under my, you can add contact details with a link that show up once we're a connection. Um, I might even put it out in a newsfeed post or an article that says, want to book time to chat with me? Click here. Just open-ended. 
it doesn't matter who they are so you can actually put a call to action on your page to where they can click and it'll take them to a calendar and they can book a time to chat with you and i was a little surprised when i did it because i did it by accident and all of a sudden i had people start to book with me you know a call here a call there it really adds up a couple calls a month times 12 months 24 people that decided they'd want to engage with me by clicking on a scheduling link okay um, so that's another thing that i would consider doing but all in all megan uh great job i would just go in and brush up on on maybe making this about section a little flashier Make sure you're consistently pumping out that content. Maybe fill in two or three bullet points on the highlights of, of what you learned or what you were good at at these positions, skill sets that you used, and then just making sure that all these other sections are, are filled out solid. So that is profile. The next one is gonna be audience. And this is where it gets really interesting. And it's not that complicated, but it's really important that we, we you know, that we actually follow through with this. So on audience, we're trying to connect with, I'm using mortgage brokers, insert auto dealer, insert banker, insert hospitality. Like if you've got other business verticals you're going into, this will work just the same. But if I'm going mortgage broker, right? And that's the type of person I'm trying to engage with. I just literally want to search mortgage broker on my search bar. And I want to let LinkedIn go search everything. And then I want to click on the people's tab, which will show up at the top. And I can narrow this list from companies and pages down to just people. It says there's about 191,000 on here. In my experience, they underplay that number vastly. There's local searches you do, it'll say there's about 1,000. It'll literally say about 1,000, when in reality, there's 10,000. So I don't know how many are on here exactly. The reality is you're not gonna be calling all, on all 191,000. We're gonna wanna take a very specific geography and go after that. So I'm gonna use uh, where Tim's at. Tim, what town are you in right now? Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale, beautiful. So let's go with Fort Lauderdale. I wanna know every single mortgage broker that has a LinkedIn profile uh, in, in Fort Lauderdale. Locations, it would help if it didn't error code on me. Fort Lauderdale, show results. Oh, of course, fill it out a report for this error a few minutes and try again. Oh boy, Tim. Of course, we got we got an error on our first webinar. You guys ever put in the comments if you've ever seen somebody just flunk on a webinar and have an error like this where the page blanks out. Here we go. Oh, it worked. <laughs> it worked. The LinkedIn LinkedIn was merciful today. So about a thousand results. This is what I'm talking about, Tim. In Fort Lauderdale, if you guys have an agency in Fort Lauderdale and you search mortgage broker, you get about a thousand results. It's probably two or three thousand. Okay. The next thing that I can begin to do though is I can go through and I can begin to to narrow results. So I can narrow by industry. I can narrow by exact township. For some reason, we're having an issue with LinkedIn. I think it's something to do with the, the webinar running plus this, plus all these other tabs. But you know, you've got filters to narrow the search down. I want to keep this audience thing really simple. Let's not get complicated with it. It's real easy. You come in and you hit connect. And when it has you connect with this mortgage broker, I'm going to put a note and in this note, I am not going to pitch them or anything. I'm going to say, who's this, Miguel? Hi, Miguel. I see we are in a similar space, and I would be honored to connect with you. It's very generic, but it's also very personal because I'm not trying to sell them anything. I'm not implying that I'm interested in anything that they sell. I'm recognizing the fact that we're in a similar space and that I would be honored to connect. That's it. This has a much higher success rate than would love to match up and connect with you here so we can talk about a potential referral partnership. I don't want to do that, right? So I send this off to him and I'm like, how do I scale this? Well, if I come in and I hit a note on this guy, oh my gosh, I got to do it again? Ramesh, right? whatever my message is. What I should do to save time is one of three things. And this depends if you wanna spend money or not, if you wanna save time or not. Method number one, copy this. Send it to the guy. I'm not gonna send this because I typed out a bunch of gibberish. Send the connection request and go to the next one. Hit add note and paste it in. Just to be clear what we're doing here. We are sending a connection request to somebody who's not connected to us. LinkedIn is granting me one message for free. You gotta pay like 80 to 150 bucks a month just to get like 20 in-mail credits. I can do a hundred of these per day. 
seven days a week. That's 700 people a week, 2,800 people a month I can send a connection request to, over 30,000 people a year. If I get half of those to connect back with me, I now went from zero to 15,000 connections of people I wanna connect with, and that's my audience. And then I began pumping out content and the audience sees people in my space winning and you guys see where this funnel starts to play but when we talk about audience like let's not overcomplicate this you either need to come in here come up with a nice message hey we see we're in a similar space would be honored to connect copy and paste it and go through a hundred of these a day or b go to upwork freelancer or any of the freelancer sites and find somebody who's in a country where they're used to making 50 cents an hour offer to pay them 10 times that and pay them five bucks an hour or eight or 10 or whatever you feel fair with, but guaranteed like people that are making four grand a year right now who are on Upwork, who would love to make 20 grand a year for you. Like if you guys can find a virtual assistant, this is the perfect use case for a virtual assistant. Let me hire somebody for an hour. It probably won't even take them half an hour a day. Let me hire somebody half an hour a day to go through, do a hundred connection requests for me. And if you're a salesperson on here, like you want me to do what? You probably spend 40 bucks a month on a virtual assistant to go to 100 connection requests a day, probably make you a million bucks in your career from the connections that you, you make out here and probably save you three hours a week of having to connect with people. Three hours you can call people, close deals, come up with creative marketing, run webinars. Like if you need to put somebody to work for you in the Philippines for, feel good about it, pay them 12 bucks an hour. I had a buddy, Sean, do that with somebody in the Philippines and the guy after three months bought a house for him and his family and two months later bought one for his mom because he was making so much more money than he could make in his own country. And Sean felt like he was getting a bargain because he's like 12 bucks an hour. I can't hire an assistant like this in the US for less than 25 bucks an hour that works at this level. So if you guys haven't dove into that world, we can do a whole category on that. We can cover that on the next webinar. But I personally would want to hire somebody and it's not what you think. It's 40 or 50 bucks a month. We're not talking thousands of dollars. Off of Upwork or Freelancer, I'd want to pay them fair, right? Maybe even bonus them. They get the job done in a timely manner. I give them a $100 bonus. $100 for them could be $5,000 for us. Like just understand the cost differential and the global environment we're in right now, right? That I don't need to feel bad about hiring somebody like that. I should feel good because they can go get a job locally for a dollar an hour working at the factory, or they can sit here and plug in a copy and paste invite with very clear instructions I give them and make a thousand times more per year working for me and be twice as happy because they're working from home. So I think it's an amazing thing. I think if you're not utilizing that and you value your time more than to sit here an hour a day or half an hour a day and do one individual connection request at a time, it's definitely worth it. Or number three, you can download automated tools. I'd like everybody to write down the name of this tool. It's called Ducks Soup. Hey, you got it go in the Google. comments. I'm going to write it. Oh, you did it. You did it. Okay. Yep. The and best. Thank you, thank you for the 41 that are still here. We only had about 20% drop off on a webinar that's uh, probably about to run about 10 minutes over. Uh, if you need to drop off, this is all being recorded, so you're not going to miss out. However, I really appreciate you guys hanging on because I know a lot of these webinars, you get to the last five, 10 minutes and people just drop off like flies, but we're going to cover some good content in the last few minutes here. So if you want to hang on, Thank you very much. If you can't, I understand. We'll send you the recording afterwards. So Ducks Soup. Frank, it's called Ducks Soup. And, and I'll even pull it up here. Ducks Soup. So this is the third option for you. Either A, do it all yourself. B, hire somebody. I don't care. Onshore, offshore. It's up to you. Hire somebody to do it for you. And number three, use Ducks Soup. This, this tool is insane. If, you, if you're still here, pay attention to this. This is insane. Yeah, so $11.25 a month, or there's the, the Turbo Ducks for 40 bucks a month, a month. And I can sign up for this tool, log into my LinkedIn profile, and a little extension pops up here on the upper right. And it walks you through, like this is very easy. It literally shows you what to do. This is not a complicated tool. It would take no more than two minutes for the average user to log in and figure out how to use this. Because what it does is you can say, I want you, to go connect with people under this search term. So I can come in here to my search again. Here we are, mortgage brokers. And I could click on my little duck soup icon and I could say, hey, duck soup, I want you to crawl this page. And I want you to go connect with anybody I'm not connected with. And I want you to, I want you to send this direct message when you send the connection request. And for the people I've already connected with, 
I want you to go back and scrape them and endorse them for the top three skills on their profile. That's insane. Like this tool for 10 bucks a month, 11 bucks a month, will go connect with, at least attempt to connect with almost 3,000 people a month, send messages to them, endorse them for skill sets that they can engage with. That's out of control, right? And so I heavily encourage you guys to check that out as well. Some people don't like automated tools. You want an actual person to have their eyeballs on it. That's where I would either look at hiring somebody else or I'd say, you know what, from nine to 9.30 every day or I get in the office half an hour early, salespeople on the call, would it kill you to show up at 8.30, get an early start on the day and spend 30 minutes connecting? Can you script messages to prospects in LinkedIn with Dust Soup? Yes, you can. And you can do conditional inserts. So I can insert somebody's first name or their company name or whatever. I could, I could even insert, I think, like, parcels of their profile. So I can really customize that message. So it's pretty amazing. Duck soup is really cool. Um, all right. Now, once you do this, and again, guys, we're at, we're at the stopping point. If you want to hang on, please do. If you can't, I understand. I'm sorry we ran over. It's the first webinar. I'm in my garage of all places. We're fired up. So if you can hang on an extra 10 minutes, thank you. Thank you. If you can't, we understand. So here's the really cool part. You do this consistently for a month maybe not even that long. And then I click on my network and my network is going to suggest to me people that are similar to people I've recently been connecting with. So you guys are going to get a real good flavor for the types of people I've been trying to connect with just by coming in here, right? And you'll see kind of a mixed bag for me, right? But if we go into like Megan's profile or anybody else, I'm sure that you can dive in and, you know, start to see that their audience might be different than mine. But I will say, this is a really good scorecard for how well are you doing with your audience? How well is LinkedIn picking up on your, your, um, your intentions? Because if LinkedIn starts feeding you a bunch of mortgage brokers and auto dealers, right? It's going to start feeding those people to me inside of my network, this tab right here. And now I can come in and check this out. Bing, 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 bing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 connection requests, eight seconds with people relevant for what I've been searching for. Now, if you log in today and you try to do that, it might be a total waste. Why? Because it might be serving you up a bunch of random people. But if you go focus on building your network to 100 more mortgage brokers than you have now and some auto dealers and some other people you want to do business with and potential commercial customers, right? Let's say you have a great commercial policy with an HVAC company. You ensure all their service team out on the job. You do the workers comp. You do everything for them, right? Maybe I want to use LinkedIn this month to pursue people in the HVAC industry to try to sell them commercial policies. Well, again, if I do enough of this manual connecting that we went through at 100 a day, what's pretty amazing is that I can eventually, two, three, four weeks down the line, click on my network, and it's going to serve me up with like the suggested connections. And so that's where I can come in. And what I've found, and I'm not, don't totally hold me to this. What I've found is I can do my hundred connection requests per day. And a lot of times I can come in a couple hours later and I can sit here and I can connect with hundreds of people. Like seriously, I can sit here, connect, 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 connect. It's wild, but you don't want to do that until it starts serving you the audience that you want. So does that make sense? This section right here, my network will suggest based on people you've recently been connecting with. So powerful, right? If you intentionally connect with a certain type of person that LinkedIn will say, well, here you go. Here's like 600 of them that look a lot like people you've been connecting with lately. And by the way, all you have to do is hit a connect button real quick. I think that's, that's pretty amazing. And it shows me how they're being broken out. People in human resources, you may know. People you may know in Northport, Sarasota area. People you know with similar roles. People from Indiana University of Pennsylvania, my alumni. Cool. So this is a tremendously powerful tool for connecting. The third quadrant, okay? Third quadrant, pull this back up, content. And I had a bunch of slides today, guys. I'll send them out. I decided to stick off of slides because I think we can work more efficiently that way. Um, so call to action, upcoming content. Yeah, so on, on, on content, here's the most important thing. I would like them to have an impression of me before I engage with them. I want them to at least have seen me out there doing stuff. Like you guys ever do business with somebody with a company that you've seen the buzz, you've heard some good things about them, you've seen some commercials. So by the time that you actually walk through their front door, you call them to do business with them, there's already some familiarity. 
that's what we're going for with our content. I'm trying to create familiarity. So from a content perspective, here's the content that I would focus on if I were you guys. I would make my primary goal to make it client focused. Pictures of clients that are winning, pictures of referral partners that are winning, pictures of my team uh, as a unit, right? Pictures of them in action, pictures of the salesperson of the month trophy, praising that employee. Uh, videos of you going out to an event uh, at an open house for a local mortgage broker and helping them bake cookies so that they could have a better open house. Like, right, like you're trying to put out like an impression to people. So David, to answer your question on, on content, first of all, client-based content is gonna be king. And I'm just gonna be transparent with you guys who are left on the call. Working at, 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 Link, at, at Team Hired and being a representation of Team Hired, I would have told myself I was crazy six months ago to think that I could just pump out content about our clients and that people would come to me. i am always been used to being the one that has to work hard and go out after people. But as we covered on the beginning of this call, y'all get hundreds of messages a month from people on LinkedIn that you ignore. That's not the way to penetrate people. The way to penetrate them is by making sure that you put out consistent content about your clients who are winning, about what you guys can do as a service. And I don't, it really doesn't matter if it's a video. I mean, video and photo are, are gonna be ideal, but you can write articles on here. You can hold events, like hold an open house at your agency to learn more about, you know, how to save on your commercial policy, right? Maybe nobody shows up, I don't know. But create the event. Schedule from five to six next Thursday night that you'll be going through a presentation showing, you know, local business owners how they can save 10% on their commercial policy. Like, it doesn't matter. People should see that you're doing stuff. Maybe somebody shows up to that. Maybe five people show up to the event. But again, like, I've, I'm building an audience. Going back to the quadrants. I have my profile. I'm building an audience. I'm putting out content that would entice them, which is not salesy, pitchy content. It's not a generic like logo of like all state, state farm farmers, whatever with the home and like the, you know, Getty images, like stock image, like no, a raw image of my team members, like a raw image of a client, uh, something written up about a client that had a tough claim that we took care of, uh, uh real, like you want to tell the real story with this content. Otherwise, like, you all get generic templates all the time from a hundred different directions, groups you're in, whoever, right? And I see it and it's, it's all anybody pumps out is like, you need coverage? Well, check out our 10% in savings this month. And it's some picture of like a mom and dad sending their daughter off to college with car keys driving into the sunset. And like, it's just white noise. But boom, I want to pop in there with a video of somebody local they recognize or with, with a really bold statement about what we're willing to do for our customers or a customer that just had an, a crazy horrendous deal with a claim and like it rocked their world and, and we helped them to the point they were in tears. Let me go have lunch with that person and like take some notes about their experience and document it and put it out to the world. How else are people supposed to know like what you guys are all about? So this is no different than the way you market on Facebook or Google or through direct mail. You're trying to tell a story. And I see LinkedIn being far, far too much of an afterthought for people instead of a forefront understanding that this is your opportunity to engage with business owners and with like-minded individuals. And that content should again be focused on what do they get out of it? Lastly on engagement, and, and I think this is where um, uh, David, you, you had asked, how do you turn connections into actions for, for upcoming content? So a, a couple things. First of all, I typically would use LinkedIn to connect with somebody and try to go scrape their contact data and go market to them outside of LinkedIn. And the reason I would want to do that is because I want them to continually engage with my content. Let's be very clear on this. For the 30 of you that hung out, it's a good thing you did because this is like biggest mistake I've ever made on LinkedIn, okay? When you think about somebody's impression of you on any social media platform, the second that you choose to go from the person pumping out content and value and just be in the beacon of hope that is your agency that helps people and you move into a sales mode of let me go shark people. Let me become a shark and go find people and hunt them down. You will never be anything else to them. And if they happen to be in the buying window, 
if this happens to be the perfect time that they want to buy and they have a problem that you exactly solve and you hit them with that, you're in luck. But if they're not, chances are that part of their brain shuts off a little bit to you moving forward and goes, that's that person who always pumps out and they pitched me, right? If you're going to pitch somebody on LinkedIn, make sure that you're using that pitch properly because this is your audience. You're the one nurturing them. It's your audience. It's nobody else's. You're, there's no two audiences alike. This is yours that you've built. And so what impression do you want to leave with them? Now, with that said, David, to answer your question, if I come into LinkedIn and I hit onto my profile, okay, hopefully you guys can still see this, and I come into, I think it's settings and privacy, and I'm sorry, back to LinkedIn, <clears throat> my network, right back where we were, I went too far, and I click on my network, right? You're going to see inside here, uh, there's invitations and stuff like that. But if I come down on the left-hand side and we see all these connections and I click on connections, you guys see on the upper right here, it says manage synced and imported contacts. You see this little button that says export content contacts. If I click this button, LinkedIn will send me a zip file of every connection I have. If they have their cell phone number, their personal email, their work email, their direct desk phone, or their address anywhere on their profile, it's on that file. So what I would rather do, David, is make sure that if I'm generating business from LinkedIn, it's because I'm using it to market to people and I'm hoping that people reach out to me and say, oh my gosh, I see that you work with so-and-so locally. Would you be willing to chat with me for a few minutes about how you could maybe partner with our mortgage brokerage, brokerage right? Here's my cell phone. I get messages like that from agents. It's astounding. My whole life I've spent cold calling people. I've never had an opportunity where people message and say, I'm interested in learning more. But the reason they do that is because we pump out content about clients winning and they are a potential client that has the same problems. And if we can make a case that we solve this problem for people just like you, chances that people are going to reach back to me is pretty great. And then number two, I can export these contacts. I can choose to download all the data articles that are put out, invitations, whatever I want. And about an hour later, David, this will send me a zip file. You can go on Facebook and run a, a Facebook marketing campaign and drop in those emails to market to those people. You can do a drip email campaign to them. A lot of them have phone numbers. You can call them, right? Hey, it's David over at XYZ Agency. Hey, I wanted to connect with you because I know we've been you know, connected on LinkedIn for a little bit now. I saw you're in the local community. Uh, we've been working with a lot of mortgage brokers like you. I uh, just wanted to see if you'd be open-minded to have a conversation about how I can help you grow your brokerage. We've helped others do it. And you see how like that call now is a little bit warmed up because they've seen the content. They, they, they've seen the testimonials, but they also didn't get a cold pitch from me that was like, hey, by the way, and I did this once, okay? I, I did it once where I nurtured a relationship and cold messaged somebody, but I spent a year and a half the, the guy that I messaged was the CEO of Fortune Off Furniture and Chair King out of Texas. They've got 50 locations, $500 million company. And for a year and a half, I nurtured a relationship. And then I said, by the way, we do sales training. And I was curious, does your team need some sales training? And he's like, yeah. Can you fly on out uh, into Houston and let's talk about it? So like, I think David, and I'm, I'm addressing you, David, because you asked the question, but this goes for everybody who's, who's hung around on the call. Like, I know it's very tempting to go back and get the immediate result. I guess what I'm here to tell you as a bit of a rebel is that it may not fully make sense to you at this exact moment, but the reality is if I'm looking for a result on LinkedIn in anything less than 30 days, I'm going to use this tool up. And it's not going to get me results probably and i'm going to spit it out because what i'm going to end up doing is burning bridges i'm going to go in and pitch people message 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 engage but if i use linkedin for two primary reasons three find people that i don't know who are the who are the 20 mortgage brokers in your market where i don't really know their name or i don't have their contact info or i don't know what they look like or i don't know how long they've been in business linkedin can help you find your audience the second thing is i'm going to use it to market and create and leave an impression on people that are my audience and number three, I'm going to think about this as an outlet for value. And so like a good example of how you can engage with your audience is take the last article that you posted on Facebook on your website 
put that article into LinkedIn, whatever valuable content you're putting out and tag people in the comments that you think would like to read it. Right. And now I'm engaging with people like engagement, 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 engagement is a two sided thing. And engagement is about getting people to get more involved with me. So engagement looks like, you know, I write an article and I, I, I comment underneath. And, and an example of that would be, you know, at a certain time in my career, I was pursuing CEOs of furniture companies. So I wrote an article about follow up. And in that article for follow up, I had me and all of my colleagues tag all of our prospects into that article. Um, so like literally they went in and tagged people that we wanted to do business with because we made mention of another CEO in the furniture space that had a very high interest in follow-up and to the point that we did some crazy follow-up with him to get his business. So the point being, I didn't have to reach out to any of these people, uh, in the, in the comments below. Larry Clayben, Gary Matter, the Matter Brothers, uh, Dan Kennedy, Devon Shumway. These are all Tom Muskelly, Gary Vaynerchuk, Damon John, Roddy Chong, Jeb Blunt. Like we tag the audience into our articles that we want to read them. And then they go in and read the article and they probably don't message me. But if they get an email from me and they get uh, some direct mail, or a Facebook post that markets to them, or they get any other communication from me, they've seen me on LinkedIn. And so I guess what I'm asking for, for anybody left on this call is please, please, please trust the process. If you're going to go with this method, trust the long play, because I promise you, if you look at your time and how you can spend it, if you can just say, you know what, for the next 90 days, I'm not focused on doing any business on LinkedIn. This is going to sound crazy, but just hear me out. I'm focused on building an audience. That's where the power is. What is this phone call today with none of you on it? And what is this phone call today? If I start off trying to sell you guys a, a, the latest and greatest team hired upgrade package for hiring, I'm not going to do that today. We're not going to talk about team hired. Why? Because I don't plan on just engaging with you here, right? My sole goal on being on this call today and the whole webinar series is to give you value. And with this process, you've got to just trust that if my sole intention is to engage with the relevant audience, give them value, show them that we're helping other people in their space win, and then think in the scale of, I want 30,000 LinkedIn connections, not 500, not 20. Guarantee you, if you look back a year from now and you've got 15,000 connections, all of a relevant audience, and all you've done is worked hard to create a reputation on there and build that algorithm up to where your content gets posted and you decide six months from now, you know what, now I'm going to start pumping content out that's sales worthy. Let me put out a, a 60 second marketing video that has a link below that goes to a page to book a call with us. Fine. Now you have 15,000 connections and you could say, by the way, if you were interested in learning more, you could click below, right? and try to maintain that reputation that I'm a value center first and then I've got the call to action. So not to beat a dead horse here, but I just wanna reiterate David, like don't even worry about that right now. That sounds so bizarre. I know it sounds crazy, but if you focus on trying to use the tool to message people, it's just gonna miss, it's gonna miss the boat for what we're trying to accomplish here, which is I'm trying to build a very large audience I'm trying to show people that I'm relevant and that I can help them. And then if I need to go seek out content uh, or, or, or contact details, I can export all my connections and email them, their social profiles on there. I can text them. I can drive to their office because a lot of them have their office address on that spreadsheet. Like it, I'm not saying don't engage with these people. I'm saying try to keep the engagement offline to their other contact methods so that you can maintain a very healthy reputation on LinkedIn that you're not the salesperson on LinkedIn. You are the example. You are the beacon. You're the one that's helping a lot of people. You're the one that they want to message and say like, am I missing out on something? Should I meet with you guys? Right? That's what we're going for. Does that make sense?